Hey everyone, welcome back to another PNS overview. Today we're taking a look at Achi, the Sinoceratops. This is the third species of Ceratops that PNS has released so far this year in the prehistoric animal models line, and I'm sure there's more to come. This figure retails for just about $30, and I'll leave a link in the description to Dan's Dinosaur if you want to pick this figure up for yourself. And remember, if you order anything from Dan's, tell him you heard about it from Dino Scream in the notes comic section of your order. It helps out the channel a great deal, and is very much appreciated. So before we take a closer look at this Sinoceratops, let's just go over the package really quick. Comes in the standard prehistoric animal models packaging that we've been seeing for the last couple of years now. Got a full art picture of the Sinoceratops on the front. Top of the box, you get a close up of its head. And just like every other PNSO figure, you get a little informational pamphlet that has more of the same artwork that you see on the box with a little skeletal of the Sinoceratops on the top, followed by a kitty story. Really wish they would include some actual scientific facts about them. I find that stuff very interesting. So anyways, enough about the packaging. Let's take a closer look at this figure. So let's start out with a nice 360 degree view of the Sinoceratops. A very well done figure from PNSO. The paint scheme is very similar to what we see on the prototype images. Actually, when I first saw the first in-hand images online about a month ago, the figure actually looked very brown to me, but I was very happy when I received mine that the figure is indeed green. The only knock I give on the paint is on the prototype images. All these osteoderms along the side are actually decked out in brown paint, which is kind of nice. It kind of breaks up the color pattern, but it's not evident on the final product. Uh, the color scheme is very similar to the Jurassic World version of Sinoceratops, which is one of the reasons why this dinosaur has become so popular over the last couple of years. And I believe this is the first scientifically accurate version we've gotten of this species. PNSO did release a baby version earlier last year. And the other versions of this dinosaur are the movie accurate ones from Mattel and Namu. And the sculpt is kind of dynamic. The head is turned to the side with the tail swinging to the side. Looks like this animal is about to charge. And this pose kind of reminds me of like the dynamic poses Papo gives their figures. So it's nice to see that PNSO is giving their figures a little bit more life with these poses. All right, let's just do a couple quick measurements on this figure. If you measure it along the curve of the tail and curve the head, this figure is actually eight and a quarter inches long and just about three and a half inches tall to the top of the frill. So Sinoceratops in real life was just under 20 feet long. So with those measurements, it put this figure somewhere in that 127 scale range. So let's zoom and take a closer look at some of the finer details, starting with this beautiful head sculpt. The head sculpt on this figure is really well done. The horns are nice and sharp. Actually, they are really sharp. It always surprised me how sharp some of these spikes are on these PNSO figures, especially when you compare it to other companies like Safari, where they were blunt those features so this is definitely a nice touch and if you forget to bring a knife to a knife fight you can always sub in a Sinoceratops it will do in a pinch the eye is painted in a gold color with a black pupil and the eye looks much better painted than it did on the previously released Makairoceratops you can clearly see the beak is painted in nice the nostril right here you can see the mouth you got some nice beautiful colors on the finestra of the frill you got some black white orange and red with a little bit of green highlights on the side that looks really really nice now there is a heavy heavy gloss coat all over the head of this figure i guess it's to highlight like maybe the keratin covering the large scales on the head and i just think they kind of did it overdid it with the uh, gloss on this figure just the whole head is just really really shiny they get down to the body it has this nice matte finish so i kind of just think it distracts from the sculpt with all this gloss they should have used it a little bit more sparingly all the spikes in the frill are decked out in white paint. They look really, really well. Like I said, they are incredibly, incredibly sharp. And then going down to the body, you can see all this beautiful scale detail. You can see all these large osteoderms sculpted in there. Like I said on the prototype images, all these osteoderms were decked out in brown paint, which would have been a nice touch. And then going down to the feet, the feet are all beautifully sculpted. Got the correct number of toes. Got a little bit of like gray paint on the bottom of the feet. It looks like the animal is walking through mud. So that's a nice touch. And then turn it over, you got some nice belly scales. You got some brown paint to highlight the armpits of the limbs. You got a little bit of a cloaca slit right here. I love the scale of variation around the dino butthole. The tail is very well sculpted. And look at the back of the animal. You actually can see some very faint stripes along the hip region go all the way down to the tail. So all in all, a beautiful looking figure. You got a little bit of a heavy seam line where the head connects to the body. But other than that, I think the sculpt looks great. Got some nice scale detail behind the frill. So all in all, a really nice looking Sinoceratops figure. I am quite pleased with it. 
So let's move on with some comparisons. First up is the baby Sinoceratops that got released early last year from PNS. So you can see just how adorable this baby looks next to the much more accurate looking adult. And I have to say, PNS really has been stepping up their game with these newer prehistoric animal model figures. The paint on all these new figures looks really, really good. Uh, I was not a huge fan of how the paint came out on this one and the baby Tyrannosaurus, but I'm very happy that PNSO is improving drastically in the paint department. And next up is the Jurassic World Sinoceratops, which is the general public's uh, view of what this animal looks like. Due to the popularity of the movie, you can see that it has these huge finestra holes in there that were not there in real life. And you know, the nose horn is much larger, but this is pretty much a you know, genetic movie monster, but still a cool looking dinosaur design. And Mattel is actually releasing a much more movie accurate paint scheme of this figure. I think it's coming out probably in a couple months. It's going to look very similar to the paint scheme that is on the PNS one, which is a homage to the Jurassic World version. And here it is with another PNS Ceratops. And here it is with their Triceratops. And I think these two figures scale really well with each other. And here it is with a couple other PNSO figures. Here it is with their Sauropelta. And here it is with their amazing Chinsusaurus. I absolutely love this figure. The more I handle it, the more I'm falling in love with this Chinsusaurus. And here it is with the Beast of the Mesozoic Triceratops. And I can't wait for their version of the Sinoceratops to come out. That figure is going to be gigantic. It's going to absolutely dwarf this one. And here is a nice little Centrosaur in a cladogram featuring Sinoceratops. First, we start with the Safari Limited Diabloceratops. The PNSO Machiroceratops, Safari Nasutoceratops, he has the PNSO Sinoceratops, the Safari Styracosaurus, the old PNSO Spinops, and the PNSO Pachyrhinosaurus. So it's pretty cool you can display all these together and have a little uh, family tree going. So, final thoughts on the Sinoceratops. I think it's a great figure from PNSO. My two biggest issues with it is the overuse of gloss on the head. And the other issue is has nothing to do with the figure itself. It is the price of it. I feel like this figure is a little expensive at just around $30. Uh, some of these other figures, uh, like the Pachyrhinosaurus and the Machiroceratops, are kind of around that $17 to $20 price range. And they are pretty much the same size as the Sinoceratops. So I have no idea why it has that you know $10 price point inflation so that is something to keep in mind if you're on a budget but other than that i think the figure is great and like i said at the beginning of the review you can pick this figure up from dan's dinosaur link is in the description and i'm still waiting on the winter wilson once i get that figure in i'll be doing my top 10 dinosaur figures of 2020 so that will do it for the review as always if you're enjoying the content on this channel show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated and i'll see you guys for the next one